Congresswoman Liz Cheney was in the hot seat at a GOP conference meeting where she was called out for criticizing the president's COVID response and for foreign policy. Now, Matt Gates even suggested that she ought to step down. Now, some called it a pylon, but this morning Cheney said it's a good thing. Take a look. On our side of the aisle, it's a healthy thing for us to have those kinds of debates and discussions. I'm, I'm sure we'll have more as things go along. But the fundamental point here is that we're unified in making sure mm -hmm. that President Trump is reelected in November, that Nancy Pelosi is no longer speaker, that we take back the majority in the House, uh, and that we ensure that we hold the majority in the Senate. can't hear her. Right. So uh, I'm going to start with you, Sonny. What do you make of this? You know, I, I think that um, if, if you were reading the articles yesterday, a lot of this was GOP versus Cheney, and, and people were questioning her loyalty to Trump, because she did come out um, in favor of Dr. Fauci. She um, endorsed um, um, Senator uh, Massey's opponent uh, during the primary, and then she withdrew that endorsement. Um, so she was challenged a lot during this GOP meeting. But I think it's more a question of maybe Cheney is reading the tea leaves, right? She's reading the cards, and she realizes that Trump is probably not going to win re-election. And so people are now jockeying for position. What happens in a post-Trump world? What happens if Biden is in office? Who is now calling the shots in the Senate? And I think that is it's what, what is happening here, rather than, let's say, all of the, the, you know, the GOP against Cheney because she's not supporting Trump. That is not really the case, because if you look at it, she votes with Trump 97% of the time. Yes, she... Um, uh, was supportive of, of Fauci. Yes, um, she was supportive of, of, of some of the, you know, uh, she, was, she went against Trump when it came to his position on masks and things like that when it came to the coronavirus. Right. But she's been very supportive of President Trump. She voted not to right. impeach him. Mm -hmm. Right. So, Megan, there is more to this, you think, yes? Yeah, just a few corrections with Sonny. Uh, Massey is a congressman from Kentucky, and it's about power in Congress, not in the Senate. And Massey is a member of Sorry, the Freedom Congress. Coalition. Right. Yeah, he's a member of the Freedom Coalition, which is the more libertarian sort of fringe element of the party. And not only did she That's endorse right. his opponent, but she gave major money to it and then ended up having to rescind it and ask yeah. for the money back because his opponent was accused of being uh, racist and sexist and a whole host of really disgusting things. And what's interesting about the fight yesterday Yesterday is it started out bringing up this this fact the fact that she had not only endorsed but given money in a primary which is highly uncouth I think it's quite tacky actually and if she is aiming for congressional power which it looks like she may go up against Speaker McCarthy and uh, Congressman Scalise to do so going forward Diverse coalitions are diverse coalitions, and do you know who understands that better than anybody is Nancy Pelosi, and she does it very well with the squad, and she does it very well with how diverse the Democratic Party is becoming and how far left some parts of it are going. And much like the Democratic Party, the Republican Party is filled with different factions, and some of those factions are the Freedom Coalition. I can't stand the Freedom Coalition. I don't agree with most things they do and most things they vote for, but it is a family, and I actually thought she was out of line by endorsing an opponent in a primary, and if you start this trend where you're going to start uh, endorsing people during their primaries, that is not a way to lead. And she's a highly, highly ambitious congresswoman. I thought she was probably going to run for Senate. Mm -hmm. It turns out that she isn't. And it, I just don't think this is a way to get power away from McCarthy or Scalise. And I need to say in candidness, my sister-in-law is an advisor to Speaker McCarthy, just putting that out there. Right. Okay. Joy, do you feel like she's being targeted here? I don't. I don't know. I, I I find it so fun to watch, uh, you know, uh, Gates and Jordan, those two <laughs> lap dogs, you know, trip over each other, to to, <laughs> to show their loyalty to the king, you know. And, and it's just fascinating. And here's a woman who votes. Ninety-seven percent. She's voted with Trump, but that's not enough. Yeah. The king of England needs a hundred percent. You know. I mean, it's it's a joke. But I agree with everything everybody said, especially what you said, Sonny, is true. I think that she and Romney are thinking, well, when when this king is is taken yeah. down, we might be the new Republican Party. I hope so, for the sake of this country, yeah. that we that he loses and that they do uh, uh, emerge victorious. I hope so. Yeah. Then we'll have two parties well, we'll, instead of one. We won't, we won't know until we know. 
And that's, you know, that's why we keep telling people you got to make sure that you get out there and vote, regardless of what they tell you about voting. Mm -hmm. You can still do it. It's still part of the thing that makes the country great, voting.